Hello, how we're getting on, hope everybody's alright. So, after last night's disappointment where England failed to bring it home again, um, just thought I'd jump on and do a video of, of an update for all things Sunderland over the weekend as well. Um, starting off with the two games that we had over the weekend. But first of all, um, more off the pitch, you know, farcical situations where I paid for the stream, paid £10 for the two games and uh, didn't get to watch any of them. Well, not through the club anyway. Uh, absolute joke. See, so I paid for the stream, logged into my account, and all I kept on getting was a gun round in the circles coming back to the login screen. On contacting the, the club, the support email that was on the on the website, I then get this email back. Hi, we are aware of the login issue not allowing customers to watch the stream. We are actively trying to resolve this issue and will confirm early next week about issuing refunds. We apologise for the inconvenience caused. So another example of how our off the pitch situation you know, is, is an absolute shambles. Surely this should have all been tested before the games went out on Saturday afternoon. But as in true Stun and Sun and style, they weren't and there was ended up another lot of unhappy and angry customers. Now as it happens, I just watched on the stick anyway, which if a nine up was on there to start off with, I wouldn't have paid the tenner. But not to worry, so I still got to see the games. But hopefully I'll be getting that refund um, this week sometime. So one of the two games, so half past 12, we played South Shields. And this was the team that we put out. So we had the, the young goalkeeper on trial from Stoke in goal. We had Dent uh, Trey Hume, Dan Ballard, Hilda, Joe Anderson, Dan Neil, Chris Rigg, Patty Roberts, Adelau Sheesh, Ramian Mundell, and Eliza Mayend up front. Now, to be fair to the lads, we know it was only it was South Shales, you know, at a lower level, but South Shales are a decent outfit. In the first half, we played absolutely brilliant. Um, scored in four minutes with Patty Roberts. We then Trey Hume, Chris Rigg, Eliza Mayenda, and our Sheesh got the goal. It was five 0 at half time. A great performance. Um, in particular, I thought Rigg, our Sheesh. Mundell and Mayenda stood out. Uh, Mayenda actually getting a goal, um, won a penalty, and, and scored a penalty. Uh, but it was a good, a good run out, and I can see a, a very good performance with some of the the fringe players, if you like, actually staking a claim. I thought now when I turn the first game, it's only about f fitness and what, and what have you. But you still like to win these pre-season games. Second half um, was a different story. So half time he made some changes. Emilia came on um, at half time. And to be fair, did nothing. Um, did nothing to change my mind about how he is. He looked lazy. Total chart and chase to how Mayenda played in the first half. Um, didn't hold the ball up. So he didn't get involved in the game. And the game finished 5-0 as it was at half time. But it was a good run out. Like I said, it was a great first half performance. Now the second game, we had at the South Shales for, uh, for, to Gateshead for a 5pm kickoff. This was the team that we had out against Gateshead, a very strong looking side. Anthony Patterson in goal, Timothy Pembelli, Luke O'Neill, Adi Alicia, Dennis Serkin, great to see him back out there, Jay Matetia, Elliot Embleton, Joey Bennett, Jack Clark, Job and Rusian. And to be fair, we were shopping. Um, now, like I've just said before, I'm not going to read too much into the pre season games, but. These so-called first-team players ambled through the game as though they couldn't give a toss, in my opinion. Um, they looked lazy, they didn't try, compared to the other lads in the first game. Total chalk and chase. Now, we're not geared to a step up and at a higher level, but to me, that's no excuse. Um, in particular, you know, I thought Pembelia, Matetia, Embleton, Bennett and Job and Russian all struggled. They didn't get in the game, they were giving the ball away. Um, it's a very very poor performance we only looked decent when the young lads came on um, through the second half like Tommy Watson um, you know Ekwa came on at half time um, uh, the lad Bainbridge came on looked decent so to me you know them lads have, have got a lot to prove when they head to Spain but like I say it's only pre-season it's all about fitness but like I've just said in the earlier on, for me, pre-season, you want to get wins under your belt. You want that breeze confidence heading into the start of the season. Um, like I say, we're now off to Spain 
for two pre-season games. We play Nottingham Forest on Friday and then we play El Dense on Sunday. Now the squad's been announced as 31-man squad, so this is the squad that'll be travelling to Spain. So the goalkeeper's got Patterson, new signing uh, Simon Moore and Chibuetta. Defenders is Dennis Serkin, Luke O'Neill, Dan Ballard, Trey Hume, RJ Lacey, Helder, Timothy Pembellier, Notorious Triantis, Niall Huggins, great to see him back in the squad. Jensen Sailed, again another one, good to see him back in the squad. And Joe Anderson. Midfielders, Dan Neil, the new signing Brown, Chris Rigg, Pierre Igwa, Elliot Embleton, Jim Matetti, Job, Adelaide Sheesh, Mundell, Thomas Watson, great to see him in the first team squad. Jack Clark, Patty Roberts, Dewey Bennett, Abdullah Barr, and the three forwards, Eliza Mienda, Nasri Vujan, and Lewis Emir. Now I hope that we get a centre forward because if them are the three strikers that we've got to work with going into the season, we're going to struggle again. I'm not going to get into it. We know the issues that we faced last season with strikers. Hopefully the club are trying to address this striker situation. They have to because them three forwards are not good enough. Mienda did look good on Saturday, but again it's against South Shields. Um, didn't really do much at, at Hibernian when he went up there, so we need this experienced striker. Kiefer Moore has just gone to Sheffield United, I believe, for £2 million. He would have been the one, but we don't know what weird as he would have been on, or if he would have come either, here either. But he's come to Sheffield, so, you know, why would he not? Um, but we'll have to wait and see. What's your thoughts on them two praise the season friendlies? Um, what is, how do you think we played? Am I justified in, in the criticism on the, of the second game, um, or is it all about fitness? Now, the club have also put out a teasing post on social media tonight, um, saying the legacy continues with 19th of the 7th, 2024. I'm guessing it's going to be the new away strip, which will be released on Friday, and I'm guessing will be worn on Friday when we play Nottingham Forest. That's what I'm doing, putting two and two together. Probably couldn't come up with five, but you never know. But that's, that's what I'm guessing. I think it'll be the new strip. If it's anything like my favourite away strip, the 92 Cup final shirt, I'll be happy and we'll be getting that without a shadow of a doubt. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that strip looks like. There has been some uh, some posts on social media about the what they've been available in Turkey and what have you. And to be fair, the home strip that was out is out wasn't too dissimilar to the post that was on um, social media before it was released. So we'll have to wait and see what it looks like. But I hope it's just something similar to the 92 Cup final shirt. Transfers. Job today has been linked with Lazio. Me personally can't see it happening unless they come in with a massive bid. Now, if they do come in with a massive bid, I'd be tempted because again, what I seen of him at the weekend, he just I don't know, he just doesn't doesn't cut it for me. I just I know he's only young and he's still gonna improve, he's got a long way to go, but somebody comes in with a, a twenty five million pound bid for him, I wouldn't I wouldn't turn it down, I'd, I'd let him go as long as it's reinvested back in the squad. I'm um, still all quite on the Jack Clark front. Um, and also all quite on the incoming front as well, which is a bit worrying. And with the staff as well, still no announcements of Reggie Labrice as assistant manager and what have you. And our Proctor was on the line at the weekend with Reggie Labrice. I didn't say Dodds anywhere. If he was there, let us know. But um, a little bit worrying that we've still got no assistant manager in place <clears throat> heading across to Spain. Now... The LU soccer shirt, <coughs> excuse me. The LU soccer shirts that we had up for grabs, and um, we've got the one left. We've got the the retro one, which is behind. Nobody predicted a two one win to Spain in the previous video, so it rolls on to uh, the the games in Spain for Sunderland. So I want to know the total number of goals that'll be scored in the two games in Spain. Nottingham Forest on Friday, El Dense on Sunday. What will be the total goals scored? Um, combined by both, by the four teams. I'm going to go for eight. I'm going for a 2-2 draw with Nottingham Forest on Friday and a 3-1 win against El Dense. So I'm going to go for eight goals. But get your um, score predictions or goal predictions in the description below for your chance to win that Retro France shirt. Um, the last one available. I have got some Sunderland shirts coming. They should be here next week. I've got two rep row ones and the new home strip coming which i'll be doing a review on when it comes i can't wait to see it just for to see what the quality is like um like on my previous video what you can see here um get them on lu soccer for 20 quid they're a bargain and what i'm hoping from what i've seen they look pretty much identical to the the ones that that they can get in the club shop so stay tuned for that coming out next week 
where I'll be reviewing that new home shirt from LU Soccer. But remember, you must be a subscriber to the channel. If you don't mind, if you are a returning viewer and you're not a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button. It's free, costs you out, and it really, really helps the channel get out to more Sunderland fans and get more people watching and get more interaction. So please like, share and subscribe if you don't mind. Watch out for the next video where I'll probably be reviewing the games of the weekend, hopefully with two wins, or if there's something else happens in between, if we do manage to sign somebody before then, or there's any outgoings or any general news, I will jump on and update you all that way. But in the meantime, as I always say, thanks for watching, take it easy, stay safe, and we'll speak soon. Ta-ra.